A decades-long conflict no political leaders have yet managed to solve. OK, so they can, they can go back to Palestine. Yeah. But, oh. but these 45 teenagers from Israel, the Palestinian territories and dozens of other countries have been charged with the task of forging a peace deal in less than two days. There was a lot of shouting, a lot of emotions. Sometimes people just stood up and went away and said, OK, I don't want to talk about it. It's too much. The simulation is led by Dr Sapir Handel an expert in peace and conflict resolution. He set just two guidelines, not to demean others and not to enter an historical debate upon the origins of the conflict. Israeli thinks this way and Palestinians have their own narratives. To go to a frustrated debate, who start to, and who did, and it's, it's dead end. We have a problem that we both of us have to solve. This force you to be constructive. Half of these students come from abroad, their perspective playing a critical role. You see that the international getting the same difficulties that Israelis and Palestinians. And sometimes, you know, international, since you're an entrenched in a conflict, you look like this. But when someone else comes and looks like this, he can come with ideas that people, Israelis and Palestinians, Palestinians do not see it. Oslo agreements didn't succeed completely, but after politicians said, OK, we will divide the area A, B and C, it actually started working and over time people get used to it. So the problem is not finding the solution, the problem is introducing the solution despite the reluctance of people. The Palestinians and Israelis each make up a quarter of this simulation. Coming together through this platform, allowing for many a different kind of dialogue, no with the biggest things. obstacle being trust. Before coming to here, I never thought that I'll be discussing the conflict with the Israeli side. I'm always discussing with the Palestinian side, same perspectives, and then after hearing their perspectives, and I was like kind of surprised that the Israeli side, actually we have some people that really care about the other side, and they don't want all these actions, clashes, violence. And after a gruelling 48 hours, a peace deal was reached. I honestly, at the beginning of the conference, did not expect it because, like, there was some hitting moments. But eventually, ended up with a resolution, like actual peace agreement, and it was it was very. I was very very pleased. I was very satisfied. The problem is not the starting point. The problem is our attitude. And if I had a chance to say something to a real politician, it's not to be discouraged by what sometimes someone said but rather be concerned about what someone thinks and how can we address his way of thinking. This is the moment where each of the groups signs their peace agreement. You can feel the excitement in the air. But for most of these students, the biggest take home is the way they now view the dispute, as well as understanding the perspective of the other side. We need trust between each other. And if we understand them, we actually can make uh, peace between each other. Their youthful perspective is not lost on these students, but they say the advantage is that it brings creativity and a sense of possibility. I guess a lot of politicians are very comfortable with remaining with the known status quo rather than going a bit to the unknown is something that I think terrifies them. Living and breathing this conflict every day, they're desperate for change. But with age on their side, is there real hope that they'll see a peace deal signed within their lifetimes? Yes. I believe in it. Honestly, <laughs> uh, that's a good question, but honestly, I, I hope, I really, really want to. I have my own doubts and my own hopes, but I really hope so that it would happen. Tracy Alexander, I24 News.